Here's a challenge to explain MPLS VPNs in 10 minutes. MPLS, multi-protocol label switching, is a technology used by service providers in their core network. And MPLS has a number of benefits for service providers. It allows them to run a simplified core network and to consolidate separate networks on top of a single MPLS network. It also allows them to create MPLS VPNs for customers. And MPLS VPNs are an increasingly popular way for companies to create a private data network to join their sites together. First of all, we need to understand a little bit about MPLS. The idea of MPLS is that as a packet comes in to the network, a lookup is done once in the global routing table of where that packet needs to get to on the edge of the network. The router then sticks a label on the front of the IP packet that identifies where it needs to get to. And then all the core routers forward packets based on the contents of the label. In fact, the label changes as it goes from router to router, but let's not complicate things for now. The important thing is that the core routers are now looking at what's in the label rather than what's in the IP header. And the IP header is ignored until the packet reaches the edge of the network and there the label gets taken off and it becomes a normal IP packet again. So the routers in the core no longer need a full routing table and the whole packet forwarding process is simplified. We say that they are switching packets based on the label and these core routers are termed LSRs, label switch routers. In the previous example we stuck the label on the front of an IP packet but MPLS can be used on front of any protocol, that's why it's called multi-protocol, including layer 2 protocols. So you can stick the label on the front of an Ethernet frame, or an ATM frame, or a frame relay frame. And this is one of the reasons MPLS is popular with large service prov providers and carriers, because they can take their legacy ATM and frame relay networks and overlay these on top of MPLS. And the protocol that's carried in MPLS is known as the transported protocol. If the transported protocol was Ethernet, for example, you can use the MPLS network to create Ethernet circuits from point to point across the network. So in this case, we've created an Ethernet virtual circuit, or EVC, between two customer sites. In fact, one way of creating VPNs is to create Ethernet circuits from point to point over the network. And these are known as layer 2 MPLS VPNs because Ethernet's a layer 2 protocol. The more common type of MPLS VPNs are known as layer 3 MPLS VPNs. And that's all we're going to talk about for the rest of this video. First of all, a word about terminology. We said that all the routers in an MPLS network are known as label switch routers. That was all straightforward. When we start talking about MPLS VPNs, all the routers change their names and the routers on the edge of the network are known as pro provider edge routers or PE routers and the ones in the core are known as provider routers or just P routers. They're still the same routers, they're still doing label switch routing, it's just that all the nomenclature changes when we start talking about MPLS VPNs. The customer routers, these are the routers on the customer sites, are known as customer edge routers or CE routers. And in all the examples so far, we stuck a sim single label in front of the IP packet. But actually, what we can do is add multiple labels to create a whole stack of labels in MPLS. And this is very common. And we can take one of those labels and make it a label that identifies a packet as belonging into a particular VPN or a VPN label as it were. Things are slightly more complicated than this, but for all intents and purposes, you can refer to it as a VPN label. So as the packet traverses the network, we have a way of identifying into which VPN it belongs. To fully create a VPN, we combine the ability to label a packet with another useful technology called VRF, virtual routing and forwarding. We talk about AVRF as being a virtual routing and forwarding instance. And we can imagine 
virtual routers as being little individual routers inside a real physical router. So you can imagine the PE router as containing lots of individual virtual routers. And each individual VRF will be configured to belong to a particular customer who's got an MPLS VPN with a service provider. And in order to create a VPN, all the customer circuits are placed inside the customer's VRF. And these virtual routers only know about the customer's other virtual routers and the customer's CE routers. They can't see any other customer's routers, either on site or their virtual routers, and no other customer can see their routers or their VRFs. So IP packets from customer A can't reach customer V and vice versa. So these virtual routers create virtual private networks for each individual customer. So that's okay when a customer has all their circuits connected to the same physical PE router, but when they need to connect elsewhere beyond this router, this is where the MPLS VPN label comes in. So an IP packet will come in from the customer edge router, and it will go into the VRF that this circuit's been placed into, and that VRF will make a routing decision. If the routing decision is that the packet needs to leave this PE router, go towards the core, it will then be given a VPN label to identify it as belonging to VRF A. What's interesting is that separate customers can have exactly the same IP addressing scheme, but because they're in two separate VRFs and these labels are used, then that's not a problem because the, uh, the IP packets are kept separate on the basis that they're only label switched and they're all identified with a separate VPN. So one of the advantages of MPLS VPNs is that you can have whatever IP addressing scheme you choose for your private network. So the packet makes its way across the core network. It's switched across the core P routers by using the outermost label. And the packet goes from hop to hop. And the VPN label isn't looked at or modified in any way, and nor is the IP packet or the IP header, until the packet arrives at the edge of the network and the outermost label is re removed or popped off. And then the VPN label is examined, and that's used to identify into which VRF this IP packet needs to be placed. The IP packet is then put inside the VRF, and the IP packet is then sent onwards to the customer router, just like a normal IP packet. It's interesting to note that the customer routers at either end are just normal bulk standard IP routers that are just dealing with IP packets. They're not doing anything special or anything different. So these edge routers from the customer don't need to be special expensive routers that can run IPsec VPNs. They're just normal um, IP routers. And this is one of the advantages of an MPLS VPN. So what we've done is create a private network between this customer's two sites by keeping the customer's packets separate from other customer's packets as they go across the service provider core by using these special VPN labels. So this is an MPLS VPN. We've shown just two sites, but you can add into this VPN as many sites as needed and they can be connected using Ethernet or broadband. And all of these sites, by default, will be able to send traffic to each other. You might want a situation where you don't want that to happen. For example, you might want this site to only be able to talk to these two other sites. And in MPLS VPNs, that's not a problem. You can create some quite complex scenarios by choosing to restrict which routes go into virtual routers. You also need to appreciate that what's been created is a private network. So none of these sites can get to the internet. That's the whole point, it is a private network. But if you want the sites to connect to the internet, then you need to arrange for internet breakout, either from a separate circuit from one of the sites that connects the other sites into the internet, or in Spitfire's case, for example, we have a separate um, internet breakout service that joins a customer's MPLS VPN to the internet. A customer might also want to join their MPLS VPN to other cloud services, such as Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure. 
and again these can be done over private interconnects so they can join their cloud into other clouds so in summary MPLS VPNs they're flexible and they're scalable we've got customers with hundreds of sites and adding new sites is very straightforward one of the advantages is that all the clever stuff is done on the service providers network and no special configuration is required on the customer routers so their routers don't have to run any special VPN software so there you go MPLS VPNs in just over 10 minutes